In mathematics, a finite field or Galois field is a field that contains a finite number of elements. As with any field, a finite field is a set on which the operations of multiplication, addition, subtraction and division are defined and satisfy certain basic rules. The most common examples of finite fields are given by the integers mod n when n is a prime number. The number of elements of a finite field is called its order. A finite field of order q exists if and only if the order q is a prime power pk. All fields of a given order are isomorphic. In a field of order pk, adding p copies of any element always results in zero. That is, the characteristic of the field is p. In a finite field of order q, the polynomial x q or x has all q elements of the finite field as roots. The non-zero elements of a finite field form a multiplicative group. This group is cyclic, so all non-zero elements can be expressed as powers of a single element called a primitive element of the field. A field has, by definition, a commutative multiplication operation. A more general algebraic structure that satisfies all the other axioms of a field but isn't required to have a commutative multiplication is called a division ring. A finite division ring is a finite field by Wedderburn's little theorem. This result shows that the finiteness condition in the definition of a finite field can have algebraic consequences. Finite fields are fundamental in a number of areas of mathematics and computer science, including number theory, algebraic geometry, Galois theory, finite geometry, cryptography and coding theory. Finite fields appear in the following chain of class inclusions, commutative rings ash florin integral domains ash florin integrally closed domains ash florin unique factorization domains ash florin principal ideal domains ash florin euclidean domains ash florin fields ash florin finite fields. Definitions, first examples, and basic properties. A finite field is a finite set on which the four operations multiplication, addition, subtraction and division are defined, satisfying the rules of arithmetic known as the field axioms. The simplest examples of finite fields are the prime fields, for each prime number p, the field gf, p, of order p is easily constructed as the integers modulo p. The elements of a prime field may be represented by integers in the range 0. PA1. The sum, the difference and the product are computed by taking the remainder by P of the integer result. The multiplicative inverse of an element may be computed by using the extended Euclidean algorithm. Let F be a finite field. For any element x in F and any integer n, let us denote by now x the sum of n copies of x. The least positive n such that now 1 equals 0 must exist and is prime. It is called the characteristic of the field. If the characteristic of f is p, the operation makes f a gf, p, vector space. It follows that the number of elements of f is pn. For every prime number p and every positive integer n, there are finite fields of order pn, and all these fields are isomorphic. One may therefore identify all fields of order pn, which are therefore unambiguously denoted, fpn or gf, pn where the letters gf stand for Galois field. The identity is true in a field of characteristic p, for every element x in the prime field gf, p, 1 has x p equals x by applying the above identity to x in 1, where x successively takes the values 1, 2, p a 1 modulo p. This implies the equality for polynomials over gf, p. More generally, Every element in GF, Pn, satisfies the polynomial equation x Pn A x equals zero. Any finite field extension of a finite field is separable and simple. That is, if E is a finite field and F is a subfield of E, then E is obtained from F by adjoining a single element whose minimal polynomial is separable. To use a jargon, finite fields are perfect. Existence and uniqueness let Q equals Pn be a prime power, and F be the splitting field of the polynomial over the prime field GF, P. This means that F is a finite field of lowest order, in which P has Q distinct roots. Above identity shows that the sum and the product of two roots of P are roots of P, as well as the multiplicative inverse of a root of P. In other words, 
the roots of P form a field of order Q, which is equal to F by the minimality of the splitting field. The uniqueness up to isomorphism of splitting fields implies thus that all fields of order Q are isomorphic. In summary, we have the following classification theorem first proved in 1893 by E. H. Moore. The order of a finite field is a prime power. For every prime power Q there are fields of order Q, and they are all isomorphic. In these fields, every element satisfies. And the polynomial factors as. It follows that GF, PN, contains a subfield isomorphic to GF, PM, if and only if M is a divisor of N. In that case, the subfield is unique. In fact, the polynomial divides if and only if M is a divisor of N. Explicit construction of finite fields. Equals non-prime fields equals, given a prime power Q equals PN with P prime and N greater than 1, the field GF, Q, may be explicitly constructed in the following way. One chooses first an irreducible polynomial P in GF, P, X, of degree N. Then the quotient ring of the polynomial ring GF, P, X, by the ideal generated by P is a field of order Q. More explicitly, the elements of GF, Q, are the polynomials over GF, P, whose degree is strictly less than N. The addition and the subtraction are those of polynomials over GF, P. The product of two elements is the remainder of the Euclidean division by P of the product in GF, P, X. The multiplicative inverse of a non-zero element may be computed with the extended Euclidean algorithm. See Extended Euclidean Algorithm A Section Simple Algebraic Field Extensions. Except in the construction of GF, 4. There are several possible choices for P, which produce isomorphic results. To simplify the Euclidean division, for P one commonly chooses polynomials of the form, which make the needed Euclidean divisions very efficient. However, for some fields, typically in characteristic 2, irreducible polynomials of the form may not exist. In characteristic 2, if the polynomial xn plus x plus 1 is reducible, it is recommended to choose xn plus xk plus 1 with the lowest possible k that makes the polynomial irreducible. If all these trinomials are reducible, one chooses pentanomials xn plus a plus xb plus xc plus 1, as polynomials of degree greater than 1, with an even number of terms, are never irreducible and characteristic too, having 1 as a root. In the next sections, we will show how this general construction method works for small finite fields. Equals field with four elements equals, over GF, 2, there is only one irreducible polynomial of degree 2. Therefore, for GF, 4, the construction of the preceding section must involve this polynomial, and if one denotes a a root of this polynomial in GF, 4, the tables of the operations in GF, 4, are the following. There is no table for subtraction, as, in every field of characteristic 2, subtraction is identical to addition. In the third table, for the division of x by y, x must be red on the left, and y on the top. Equals gf, p2, for an odd prime p equals, for applying above general construction of finite fields in the case of gf, p2, one has to find an irreducible polynomial of degree 2. For p equals 2, this has been done in the preceding section. If p is an odd prime, there are always irreducible polynomials of the form x2ar, with r in gf, p. More precisely, the polynomial x2ar is irreducible over gf, p, if and only if r is a quadratic non-residue modulo p. There are quadratic non-residues modulo p. For example, 2 is a quadratic non-residue for p equals 3, 5, 11, 13. And 3 is a quadratic non-residue for p equals 5, 7, 17. If p a perm l 3 mod 4, that is p equals 3, 7, 11, 19. One may choose a 1 a perm l p a 1 as a quadratic non-residue, which allows us to have a very simple irreducible polynomial x2 plus 1. Having chosen a quadratic non-residue R, let I plus or minus be a symbolic square root of R, 
that is a symbol which is the property i plus or minus 2 equals r, in the same way as the complex number i is a symbolic square root of a 1. Then, the elements of gf, p2, are all the linear expressions. With a and b in gf, p. The operations on gf, p2, are defined as follows represented by Latin letters of the operations in gf, p. Equals gf, 8, and gf, 27, equals, the polynomial. Is irreducible over gf, 2, and gf, 3, that is, it is irreducible modulo 2 and 3 nor in gf, 3. It follows that the elements of gf, 8, and gf, 27, may be represented by expressions. Where a, b, c are elements of gf, 2, or gf, 3, and is a symbol such that. The addition, additive inverse and multiplication on gf, 8, and gf, 27, may thus be defined as follows. In following formulas, the operations between elements of gf, 2, or gf, 3, represented by Latin letters of the operations in gf, 2, or gf, 3, respectively. Equals gf, 16, equals, the polynomial. Is irreducible over gf, 2, that is, it is irreducible modulo 2. It follows that the elements of gf, 16, may be represented by expressions. Where a, b, c, d are either 0 or 1, and is a symbol such that. As the characteristic of gf, 2, is 2, each element is its additive inverse in gf, 16. The addition and multiplication on gf, 16, may be defined as follows. In following formulas, the operations between elements of gf, 2, represented by Latin letters of the operations in gf, 2. Multiplicative structure, the set of non-zero elements in gf, q, is an abelian group under the multiplication, of order q a euro 1. By Lagrange's theorem, there exists a divisor k of q a euro 1 such that x k equals 1 for every non-zero x in gf, q. As the equation x k equals 1 has at most k solutions in any field, q a euro 1 is the lowest possible value for k. The structure theorem of finite abelian groups implies that this multiplicative group is cyclic, that all non-zero elements are powers of single element. In summary, the multiplicative group of the non-zero elements in gf, q, is cyclic, and there exists an element a, such that the q a euro 1 non-zero elements of gf, q, are a, a2. Aka 2, aka 1 equals 1. Such an element a is called a primitive element. Unless q equals 2, 3, the primitive element is not unique. The number of primitive elements is i, q a 1, where i is Euler's totient function. Above result implies that x q equals x for every x in gf, q. The particular case where q is prime is for Matt's little theorem. Equals discrete logarithm equals, if a is a primitive element in gf, q, then for any non-zero element x in f, there is a unique integer n with zero a per male currency n a per male currency q a 2 such that, x equals n. This integer n is called the discrete logarithm of x to the base a. While the computation of n is rather easy, by using, for example, exponentiation by squaring, the reciprocal operation, the computation of the discrete logarithm is difficult. This has been used in various cryptographic protocols, see discrete logarithm for details. When the non-zero elements of gf, q, are represented by their discrete logarithms, multiplication and division are easy, as they reduce to addition and subtraction modulo q a euro 1. However, addition amounts to computing the discrete logarithm of m plus n. The identity, m plus n equals n, m o n plus 1, allows one to solve this problem by constructing the table of the discrete logarithms of n plus 1, called zx logarithms, for n equals 0. q a 2. Zex logarithms are useful for large computations, such as linear algebra over medium-sized fields, that is, fields that are sufficiently large for making natural algorithms inefficient, but not too large, as one has to pre-compute a table of the same size as the order of the field. Equals roots of unity equals, 
every non-zero element of a finite field is a root of unity, as x q a 1 equals 1 for every non-zero element of g f, q. If n is a positive integer, a nth primitive root of unity is a solution of the equation x n equals 1 that is not a solution of the equation x m equals 1 for any positive integer m.